to our gospel reading this morning. We are staying with Matthew. It's Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. You can follow along on the screen, or if you would like the word of God in your hands, you can turn to page 18 in the New Testament section of your pew Bible. Listen again for God's word to you. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Haiti will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and then whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Let us pray. O oh God, just as the psalm prayed, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Great moments are born from great opportunity. Does anyone know what movie that line is from? It's an old one, so I'll, I'll give you that, uh, that hint. Anyone have any guess? I, you know how much I love movies, a little, a little movie trivia today. It is from the movie Miracle. Anyone familiar with the movie Miracle? A few of you? Oh, I've even got Charlie. You, you even know the, the movie, all right. Awesome. Well, if you, okay, Sam, you know the movie too? All right, I love it. I love it. That's because you're, you're a hockey family. You guys like hockey. It is the, the story of the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team's victory over the seemingly invincible Russians. After Kurt Russell says those iconic words, he continues with this speech. And that's what you have here tonight, boys great opportunity. That's what you've earned here tonight. One game. If we played them 10 times, they might win nine, but not this game, not tonight. Tonight, we skate with them. Tonight, we stay with them and we shut them down because we can. Tonight, we are the greatest hockey team in the world. And of course, after hearing that speech, they go on to win that game and eventually get the gold medal. This is probably considered one of the greatest speeches ever given. And it has great company. There have been others over the years as well, given at just the right time. Dwight Eisenhower's farewell address in 1961, when he said, we must guard against the acquisition of unwanted influence. Mel Gibson in the movie Braveheart, they may take our lives, but they can never take our freedom. Martin Luther King Jr. in 1963 said, I have a dream. Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address and John F. Kennedy's inaugural address when he said, ask not what your country can do for you ask what you can do for your country. Some pretty remarkable and amazing speeches. Well, in our text for this morning, Jesus sets the stage for the greatest speech, really the greatest speech given of all time. Jesus and the disciples were in the district of Caesarea Philippi, where King Herod had built a temple to Caesar Augustus. And Jesus asked them, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And the disciples seem to respond and echo with the rumors that they had been hearing on the street. And they say, well, John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, or another prophet. Now,
Now, they're actually paying Jesus a compliment here, right? I mean, they were praising him. But it wasn't the answer that Jesus was looking for. And so he responds to this list of prophets with a more personal question. But who do you say that I am? And in this moment, Peter speaks up and he gives a stunning answer. He says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Mic drop. Peter's declaration here about Jesus changes everything. The course of his life and the history of the entire Christian church. A great speech, right? Well, okay, so maybe this wasn't so much a speech as the greatest comment ever made. <coughs> or perhaps the greatest answer ever given. But regardless of what you call it, it was great. Probably the greatest ever. So what makes this so great? Well, one commentator I read said that it was given by the right person at the right moment with the right vision and the right understanding. For starters, Peter is the right person here. He's not an extraordinary person as we have already seen. He has some of the, the same strengths and weaknesses as all the other disciples. And it's because Peter is so very human, so very much like any one of us, that he is the right person to make a declaration about Jesus. Peter also speaks at the right moment. At this point in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus is nearing the completion of his ministry in Galilee. Soon he will head toward Jerusalem and face the suffering and death that awaits him there. But first, he needs to make sure that his disciples are clear about who he is and what the beloved community looks like. This time, in Caesarea Philippi, is the right moment for Peter to speak up. And when he makes this statement, Peter also has the right vision. He senses that Jesus is not just an ordinary prophet like Elijah or Jeremiah. And on top of this, Peter has the right understanding. In this moment, at least, he seems to grasp that Jesus is the son of the living God. A great answer to a great question. And with that, Jesus says, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Jesus gives him a name, which means rock, saying that Peter will be the rock on which the church will be built. The gates of Hades will not prevail against it, predicts Jesus. The church will be so strong that death itself will not overcome it. Jesus concludes by giving Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven with authority to bind and to loose, which means that Peter now has the authority to be the chief teacher in the church. The keys to the kingdom of heaven are not about who gets in the pearly gates, but all about teaching. Peter's given authority to teach in the name of Jesus and to share his grace and truth with the world, just as the church continues to do today. So what can we do to follow the example of Peter in being the right people in the right moment, sharing the right vision and the right understanding? Well, we go back to that quote from the coach in the movie Miracle, who said, great moments are born from great opportunity. Friends, this is where we are. We are in the midst of a great moment born from a great opportunity. This is a unique time in the life of Green Acres Presbyterian Church. For over 65 years, Green Acres has served, gathered, worshiped and prayed on this very same plot of land, living out what it means to be followers of Jesus Christ. 
Our community has been enormously blessed by the generations preceding us who have been generous to the, to the beautiful campus that surrounds us and have also taken great care to serve those outside these walls. After five years of doing research, having conversations, getting feedback, and lots and lots of prayer, it became apparent to the session that for the mission and ministry of Green Acres to continue well into the future, big steps needed to be taken to address the growing needs of our aging building. We have not undertaken significant renovation work to the educational wing since it was built back in 1957. Now, you're going to hear more about the process of all of this at our lunch here in just a little bit. But as we slowly came out of the pandemic, the session wrestled with figuring out where we go from here and defining who we are and what is important. Thanks to some generous donations, we were able to take uh, the first step and replace the windows in the church th that we have just dedicated. The second phase is to renovate our classrooms that are deeply in need of restoration and updating. This is a great opportunity for us to proclaim that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, with our actions, and to put our faith in motion. Each one of us has a great opportunity to play the role of Peter in the world today. He was given an opportunity to give a speech about Jesus, and it turned in to the greatest ever. He did not miss his moment, and neither should we. Friends, we are the right people in the right moment with the right vision and the right understanding. So may it be for you and me. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.